Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Today I wanna to talk about a concept I like to call essential elements in watercolor, meaning how can you take everything that is essential from the scene and use it to recreate the scene without actually creating the scene itself. Uh, we'll talk about shapes, we'll talk about negative spaces, we'll talk about light and shadow and color harmony and temperature and all of those good stuff. So let's jump into the process. So first off, drawing, and I didn't cut out anything. We're gonna look at the entire process uh, because it's fast, it's really fast. So look at what I'm doing here. What is the main thing you see? If you take even a, s a few steps back from the reference photo, you definitely see the sky there and some of the mountains leading up to the city. So I'm looking at it, if you think about it logically, sky, mountains and nature, and then city or fortress, in this case in Achaltiche in <laughs> Georgia, uh, and that's all the elements I need. I don't need anything else. Now what I'm doing here is very complex. I'm actually turning this entire big elements. I'm div I'm dropping I'm I'm kind of breaking them down into abstract shapes that still represent what what's really there. So instead of putting the exact location for those uh, castle or fort uh, walls and exactly where the pool is and where the domes are. I don't care about that. I'm dropping in lines that follow the perspective. So you see to the right and then to the left, lots of sets of parallel lines. And then I'm kind of winging it in between them, which is a, a very fun way to draw for me. Uh, it's taking quite a gamble. Uh, but it is having the essential elements of the scene within it. So what are we talking about here? We have those f forts, kind of large walls. We have a bunch of buildings there, a random dome I threw in there. We definitely see where the sky is going to be. We definitely see where the mountain is going to be. And then we're going to just squeeze in there in the background uh, a bunch of random kind of houses and structures because you can see some of that. It's kind of a landscape, but also a cityscape uh, type of view. Uh, so putting in those just abstract shapes representing the elements of the scene can be the solution for many problems. And it takes a lot of time to learn how to do that. So you see, I'm just, just putting some random shapes there uh, for the background. It takes time to learn how to do that. But I wanted to show you how far you can take it and really basically ignore 99% of the details and just put in abstract shapes that represent them. So now we'll start with the first wash and I'll talk a bit more about the shapes I constructed here in just a second, starting with uh, some blues for the skies. And then as we get to the land, I'm starting to incorporate some yellow there just to create some kind of a green. But you'll see the mountain on the, on the right side is quite blue. So there I'm actually gonna put more manganese blue hue. Currently the, the blues are a mix of the two manganese blue hue and French ultramarine. Um, <clears throat> and as this section starts to uh, dry, uh, I'll get some wet and wet work in. So there's no hurry to continue. I'm using quite a wet wash. I don't have to be in a hurry. I can take my time and make sure I properly mix everything. And now for the red, I decided to go for the pyrrol scarlet, very strong in your face kind of red. Uh, very weird color harmony, if you ask me. Uh, and I'm covering everything that isn't a highlight. Now I'm kind of inventing the highlights, but I'm imagining imagining them to be the tops, top sides of the walls of of the the walls of the fort, uh, of the ground. And these are areas that I'm just gonna skip. Now the same thing I did at the drawing stage, I'm doing the same thing now. What is it? I'm breaking down those very complex shapes into abstract elements to represent them. So all of the red roofs just turn into a red wash. Uh, this thing in the foreground is kind of a muted uh, yellow. Um, painting my way around everything that's a highlight like the roads and the, the roofs of the structures putting in those beautiful gardens around it. But again, my location, my placement isn't following the reference to the T at all. I'm still utilizing that idea of abstract uh, shapes to represent the essential components of the scene. And again, what are the essentials? The distance, the mountains, and by the way, I didn't do wet and wet, <laughs> my bad. I'm, I'm gonna pre-wet now uh, and then do some wet and wet. So you see me pre-wetting the area and then starting to do wet and wet. And I'll, I'll build all the shadows in this wash. But what are the essential elements? This, these mountains, the sky, the buildings, and the, the little small elements, small which are essentially highlights. It's just a bunch of dots, really. And you don't have to paint around all of them. You can definitely put them later on with some 
uh, opaque paint or white gel pen. So don't worry about that too much. Use a hybrid approach if you want uh, to make things a little easier. For the mountain on the left, I'm getting it with wet and wet very significantly. The one on the right, I'm not blending. I find that I like that uh, balance of one side of the horizon being blended and the other still having a clear border. Uh, and the mountains on the left are less clear to me. So it is the part I would like to blend a little more, if you will. Uh, still a very wet wash, very nice, very flowy, which I love and enjoy. Uh, using Lebanon brushes, I have a bunch of them here. This is the Wangi, I believe. Wangi, <laughs> I never know how to pronounce it, but one of the coolest ones. I, I do have the links, of course, in the description box. And by the way, check out my live stream interview with Tracy Lebanon, uh, the person who makes these brushes, the businessman behind them. It's just really interesting. Uh, and not, not enough people saw it, I think. Uh, so painting around those walls for now, being careful, and you already can start feeling some of them pop forward. That's what happens when you leave these highlights. Now, if something is too strong of a highlight, it'll feel detached, but we're still not at that point yet. Okay, so to, in my mind, I'm just constructing the shapes, the general shapes of light and shadow. And let me give you a bit of an exercise. Look at the reference photo, squint your eyes, and maybe take a few steps back. What do you see if you had to divide it into light and dark? That's all I'm asking myself at this stage. The rest is very um, arbitrary. So the colors are kind of what I see very vaguely. Uh, I get some greens where it's green. I get some blues where it's blue, some reds where it's red, some yellows. But other than that, I don't really care about anything. So what you see when you look at this scene is basically if you divide it into light and dark, if we take this into Photoshop, turn it black and white and use the posterize feature, you'll see basically that the sky is light, the roads are light, the rooftops are light, uh, the walls are light, uh, the, the, sorry, the walls are, some of them are light. And then the dark parts are the shadows on the walls, the grass, all the green is pretty dark. So that's dark. Again, shadows of the walls, which I'm getting right now. Uh, anything under the rooftops, uh, the grass, the greens, the trees, they're all dark. That's the division I'm looking for. And, and I'm, you see, I'm even putting these small dotted lines to represent the shapes of the fort's walls, but that's all I really need. And, and to do this kind of work, you really have to learn how to abstract. And, and how to abstract by combining your imagination. Again, not an easy skill, but this is the way, funny enough, I enjoy painting the most. I don't know why I love that it's so freeing. I find that if I can really push the boundaries of how much I can simplify, uh, it just turns everything to more fun and I really enjoy these kinds of processes. I don't enjoy as much to really draw each and every small detail. Uh, unless I focus more on the values and then I, I don't care about the colors. And also it depends on the subject, like cars, I'm okay with it, but I still like to abstract some things. I still like to simplify some transitions of light to shadow um, because I find it's more interesting. I find that it's more interesting to leave something for the viewer to look at, right? So here I am continuing with this pattern of dotted lines seeing how it, there's a door there, doorway or archway there that I just put with one little shape. And it will fall into context the more darks I add. So take your time with this stage. Don't give up, keep going. Um, and even if you don't like it, I would challenge myself to wait uh, a day or so, or even just don't look at a painting for a few hours and then revisit it and ask yourself, don't even ask yourself, just look at it. And, and if you like it, then it's a good sign. Um, or take a few steps back, look at it from afar. To me, this painting ended up looking so much like the reference photo, having so much of its essence, especially if I take a few steps back. Uh, it has everything. It has the walls, the city, the mountains, and it's beautiful. And it's my impression. It's my take on it, right? Uh, and you know, if, if, if I feel like doing something realistic, I will. And I'm, I'm very much a fan of don't uh, don't avoid scenes that scare you in realism. Try and learn how to do that so you can do these abstractions. Because the first step to uh, exaggerating or abstracting or changing is knowing how to paint things as you see them. That's just how it is. You have to learn. Look at this beautiful structure there. It has. It's really one of the most beautiful structures I saw there. Um, it has these beautiful marble marble not marble marble poles. Uh, it looks so good. 
Uh, here, the, um, the ones I'm painting right now. You can barely see it here, but if I remember, I'll attach a photo. I'll actually write it down for myself. Uh, marble and also posterize. I will. I do want to show you posterized version of this. Uh, but in any case, yeah. So <coughs> if you uh, are able to learn how to paint things as they are and as they appear, you will be able to learn how to abstract things as well. And start small. You don't have to start with this scene. That's quite complex. Just look at one of the structures and try and abstract that. See if you can just, you know, disregard the color a bit. If, if it's cool, go for a cool color. If it's warm, for warm. But try and really get the main shapes in. Um, don't even worry too much about the values, to be honest with you. Right now, I'm not too worried about the values either. All I'm worried about is that division again of, of dark and light. If I can get that division right without going too dark, because you see my wash is still quite flowy, it moves, it's wet, it's what you'd call uh, coffee consistency, I guess. Um, not even milk, I would say. Maybe on the verge of milk. Um, just focus on getting it to that next darker step, you know? That's really all you need. Uh, put in some of that um, red light. Uh, which is actually an orange that's under the pile of scarlet. I forgot to mention that. Uh, just a word about my colors, actually. Manganese blue hue, because I haven't discussed it too much. Uh, manganese blue hue is my um, cooler kind of blue. It's beautiful for skies and mountains in the distance, stuff like that. What I'm doing now, by the way, is enhancing the, the focal point. I'm adding this orange to make these buildings pop a little more, have more presence. Again, I don't care about the exact value. They're much lighter. I don't care about that, right? All I care about is the impression and interest that I can create, um, which is why I find this way of painting the freest. And if I can do this and still create something that's quite similar to the reference photo, that's a huge win for me. Uh, so you see me now putting windows, details, shadows under uh, the buildings in the background, darkening some elements up uh, with some details. Very fine. Let's go back to the colors for just a second. I'm using uh, the manganese blue hue. Uh, which is my cooler blue, great for sky, great for mountains, French ultramarine, great for warmer elements, even for the sky as well. Um, great for darkening things up. A lot of my dark colors rely on French ultramarine and pyro scarlet. Uh, and pyro scarlet is that very dominant red. Under that, I have the red light or cadmium or whatever it is, red light, which is on the verge of orange, really. Uh, then we have Indian yellow, a good staple warm yellow that I like a lot. And we have neutral black, uh, which is a great tool for me sometimes to darken things a little more severely if I need to darken things fast. And then I have May Green. Now, May Green helps me get that glow on the foliage uh, that sometimes can be missing if you're using especially French ultramarine and Indian yellow. Because remember, French ultramarine is a bit warm. So it has a bit of red in it as well. It's, it's kind of pushing the blue towards the purple ever so slightly. Uh, and because of that, if you mix it with yellow, you get a very muted green. The muted green is great for general kind of green usage, uh, but it does fall short sometimes when you really want to convey the glow on top of uh, different areas. And then I use May Green very strong out of the tube. Uh, and that really helps. Now I'm adding a ton of dots in the background. You see all of these small houses and rooftops and details. Again, abstract elements. It, these are abstract elements. They represent a house just by putting a dotted touch. And if you take a few steps back, I challenge you to do that, you will see its effect. Now, if there's one thing I would have changed now looking back at the process is actually maybe darkening the left area a bit, that mountain. Uh, and uh, because it's, it's, I could have created a stronger contrast with the city walls, the, the fort versus walls, but also just because it needs to be a little darker. On the other hand, you could say that it enhances it because it makes the background really be pushed to the back creates a nice sense of depth so you know it really is a matter of personal taste at this point you could argue that it's less accurate and you would be correct but we're talking about beyond accuracy here now i'm taking my tiny brush one of my favorite brushes to get these finer details in also a lebanon brush you can find everything on the website uh, and putting in these shadows under the rooftops these small dotted windows, and I will include in a future video uh, the, the, the specific names of the brushes. I'll try um, elaborating whenever is relevant, uh, maybe in the description. Uh, we have the small roof there, uh, but this is you know, you know pretty much done. There isn't much left. Uh, I'm putting in some people actually with a shadow casting to the left. Just thought it would be fun to show that there is a presence, some movement 
Uh, maybe b birds could help, but I didn't put them because, I don't know, in aerial views, I don't put as many birds. Uh, it just doesn't make as much sense to me. Uh, but on this note, uh, aerial views are among the things I enjoy the most to paint. Um, I just find them so fascinating. You can get away with so much abstraction. I actually have one pretty old that I did of Jerusalem, and it looks so good. Uh, to this day, it holds up as, I think, one of my best. I'll, I'll try and remember to include that. I'll, I'll write it down. There's one. I'll take a picture of it because it's, it really shows you how far you can take that abstraction and have it look super duper good, uh, which is always fun. Signing this one real fast and then we can uh, remove the tape. And I know you may look at this and think to yourself, this is a bunch of nothing. Uh, but trust me, just take a few steps back from the screen. I think it looks spectacular. And it's one of the those views that I enjoy painting the most just because... It allows you to get away with so much, you know. Uh, but in any case, here it is up close. I hope you enjoyed this one. And now let's wrap it up. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that makes sense and you can create something that's completely new, that's completely weird and bizarre. But if you just take a few steps back, it is, I think, spectacular. Uh, and I really, really like the result for many different reasons. It has everything that I think watercolor should have. It has these... Um, uh, the whole edges, color, harmony, temperature, interesting. I love that some of the pencil is actually visible here. I like so much about this and I hope you do as well. If you want to learn how to paint like this and how to paint like me and let go, enjoy the process, get something beautiful on paper. Be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. Link is in the description box below. I am working on a follow-up course that will discuss realism, uh, inaccuracy, more in-depth and values. So that's something to look, uh, look out for. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now let's wrap it up.